I'm chair of the finance committee, Harwich Finance Committee, and uh, we'd like to get started our meeting on uh, Thursday, March March 11, 2021. I'll uh, read a little uh, thing from Governor Baker on, on public meetings. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open law meeting, gen, uh, general law, chapter 30, section 18, and the governor's March 15, 2020, order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Harwich Finance Committee on Thursday, March 11th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Significant uh, specific information and general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the Town of Harwich website at www.harwich dash ma.gov. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to, to watch the meeting may do so in the following manner on channel 18 by watching the simulcast at http forward slash harwich 18 dot d y n d n s dot org forward slash cable com, uh, cable cast forward slash public forward slash live dot aspx question mark channel id equals one, no person in attendance of in attendance of members of the public will be permitted. Will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technology means. In the event that they're unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the town of Harwich website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. I'd like to call the meeting to order uh, with the members, obviously, that are present here. Uh, Mary? Here. Um, okay. Uh, Stan? Here. Okay. Mark? Present. Brian? Here. Angelo? Here. And John, that's seven people present. Uh, Tom Sherry and uh, Dale Kennedy are not, not here. Okay, moving on with the agenda. Uh, introduction and welcome guests for uh, any public comment. Uh, I'll introduce uh, the guests uh, shortly. Our uh, presentations shortly. And uh, uh, okay, approval of the minutes of the Miami Committee. <laughs> Yes, if, I guess if, if people uh, probably could <laughs> mute before her. Anyway, uh, approve the Finance Committee meetings of March 4th, uh, 2021. Uh, entertain a motion by someone. I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes of whatever the date was. March 4th. I second. Okay, second. Uh, all those in favor, but signify by saying aye. Uh, Mary? Aye. Mark? Aye. Brian? Aye. Sorry. Brian? I muted my mic. Oh, you are. Hey, Brian. Okay. Uh, Dan? I mean, Angelo? Aye. Uh, Dan? Aye. And John? Uh, that's uh, seven to zero. The minutes uh, passed. Two, two people aren't here. Okay, moving on to new business. Uh, it's, it's a discussion and vote and voting uh, on all pres uh, community preservation articles, hopefully tonight. Uh, Tom Powers, uh, I mean, Tom Powers, that's, I work with a guy named Tom Powers, excuse me, Joe Powers, uh, Acting Town Administrator, uh, is here just uh, as kind of background information, I guess, for a lot of the articles. But also, he's an applicant uh, for the town on nine of the articles, and uh, he can uh, speak to those if, uh, if folks have any questions. I can give some commentary. I have sat in on a lot of PC, CPC uh, uh, meetings, and, uh, and then we have uh, four, uh, five people presenting tonight. Uh, Elaine uh, Sholin, uh, Chairman of the Real Estate and Open Space Committee. Uh, Michael Locke from Harwich Conservation Trust. Uh, Eric Beebe from the Howard's Recreation Department, Robin Kelly, Administrator of the Cemetery Department, uh, and David uh, Spitz, uh, Chairman 
of the Brooks Academy Museum Commission. And I also see Tom uh, Evans in the lower uh, left-hand corner of my screen, who is with the Howard Conservation Trust also, and is welcome to uh, speak at all, to speak into any articles at all possible. Uh, just like to give just a, a quick background on what uh, uh, or what CPC is and what or, or CPA and uh, those their initials obviously and uh, what what that is is uh, it's a three percent for the general public and for folks that may be tuning this later uh, the funds from that for those for that commission or committee is developed from a, a three percent uh, tax levy on everybody's personal property tax in, in, in the town of Harwich and if folks get their property tax bill in the upper right hand corner right underneath uh, what you owe for taxes is a little initial CPA and that stands for a community preservation act and uh, I believe that was the act that was uh, by the state that was uh, authorizing towns to charge a three uh, three percent uh, uh, levy uh, and uh, that is, and, and that that money that's there uh, goes into what they call the, the CPC Commission. It's a Community Preservation Commission, and that's a town uh, committee made up of about nine members. Seven are from uh, various boards in town uh, uh, that represent uh, some of the categories, which I'll get into shortly. And then two members that are appointed by the selectmen. And their task was evaluating applications that come in for app for funding for four different uh, categories, open space, historical preservation, affordable housing, and uh, open, uh, open space real, uh, recreation, sorry, Eric, <laughs> you know, the four categories for, for funding. And, uh, and the act was, or the town of Harwich adopted this in 2005. And since 2005, the town has raised uh, through this 3% tax levy, $18 million and the state has contributed uh, roughly uh, $8 million for a total of, you know, $26 million. And uh, though that $26 million is uh, then distributed through these four categories that I mentioned that people could apply for. Uh, and the, the state's contribution is initially started off as a one dollar for dollar amount of the 3%, but has been sliding up and down over the course of, uh, 17 years, uh, but the, the lowest contribution rate has been 22% of what the town raises up to 100%. And so that's $26 million that has been raised from lots of good projects throughout the town. Uh, and with that, you know, I'd like to, as I said, uh, welcome Joe Powers to the to the meeting to give us background and can speak to articles that a present, uh, presenter is not speaking to, to or about and then for the other uh, five uh, folks that are gonna be presenting to us tonight. Uh, at the end uh, of the presentations, we will move back to the list of uh, CPC articles and go down them uh, one by one uh, with the members and then we'll, we'll discuss them briefly uh, or however long it takes and then we'll vote on them. And I can say it's my intent to vote as many articles as we can. Uh, there's two articles uh, tonight that we need or I think I need a further uh, clarification on whether or not uh, CP funds, CC, CPC funds can be used on those articles and mostly around uh, issues. And uh, I'm sure, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Joe, but all like all town warrants, they're all vetted by town council before uh, they actually go onto the town meeting floor. So all articles do get vetted, uh, but these two, uh, two of them are uh, for, or, or one is is a private, uh, actually they're both uh, private uh, entities that are seeking CP funds to do things with. And uh, I'm not sure if, if uh, that can be used for private things. And then one particular article is for uh, uh, an entity that's outside the town's jurisdiction in, or it's, it's in the neighboring town in Dennis. And, uh, from what I understand, I think we're on pretty good terms to, to be able to approve them, but for legal counsel purposes, uh, we'll, we'll defer to that. Uh, nothing precludes us from voting on them tonight. We can always, uh, like on our, all articles that we vote and either approve or disapprove, we can always reconsider those articles at a future meeting. So uh, just by voting on them doesn't make them automatically uh, that we can't change the vote. We can always change the vote. 
Uh, so with that being said, I'd like to welcome our first presenter, uh, uh, Elaine Sholwin, uh, to talk to us about uh, her article. Uh, and I'm taking the orders out of article, uh, out of order, uh, starting with the ones I think uh, will be short presentations, getting into the more lengthy ones. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, could I beg your indulgence for a moment just to, yeah. um, uh, first of all, thanks for the invitation to be here this evening. Uh, thank you to you and your members for your ongoing work. And we'll see you all again tomorrow morning and Saturday morning as we get back into the budget. Um, but I did, um, I did want to just quickly address some of the things you've mentioned. Uh, and I came uh, just a few moments ago from community preservation. So I do want to confirm that the question, uh, the questions that have arisen at community preservation of uh, the, the legal matters that you mentioned, uh, Chairman David Nixon and our, our attorney, John Giorgio of KP Law, uh, have been discussing those items and the three of us will be meeting Tuesday morning uh, to get background information. So I'll be able to report back out uh, uh, to you, Mr. Chairman, as your committee continues to deliberate on those matters. Um, but I also just want to state uh, the, my purpose for being here this evening. And, um, and it's first and foremost in support of uh, Eric, Elaine, David, and Robin. Now, I don't want Michael and Tom to feel like they're being slighted, but as they know, uh, the difference being Eric, Elaine, David, and, and Robin are, are acting on behalf of the town, um, either through their, their responsibilities as a department head or as a committee chair. And I just want to remind everybody, and I had the same conversation a few moments ago with community preservation. Um, I know as you folks uh, get into your deliberations, um, it, it, it certainly is um, sensible that you would seek uh, some sense of history on similar projects, uh, how uh, current requests um, match with uh, prior requests, and to some degree as to how uh, this, these projects may relate to the future. But I, I am, I've been doing a, a tour, if you will, of various boards and committees and just reminding everybody that uh, as we get through this session for town meeting, which is uh, 58 days from today, um, Megan Eldridge, Assistant Town Administrator, and I will begin work um, by June 1st on anything to do with fiscal year 23. And so what that gets to for the purposes of you folks tonight is any of the community preservation projects that may come forward in future years, and as soon as fiscal year 23, will first be vetted through administration. Uh, the same will be done for capital projects, and, and that's tying into the Board of Selectmen's directive to me uh, to, to, to bring these back into the fold of, of the selectmen and then administration. And so, uh, as you folks have talked about some of the legal issues, and community preservation has talked about the issues as to who's the primary applicant, um, this effort will erase all of that in advance so that it will be understood that as uh, department heads and committee chairs uh, envision projects either of a capital or community preservation nature, as well as their operating budget, but that's a separate discussion, uh, that vetting will begin in June uh, ahead of the CPC process, which begins typically in August, and certainly well in advance of the work that you folks do starting as early as October and November. And so um, again, I'm here tonight to, to lend support to Eric, Elaine, uh, David and Robin. Um, not that they need it, they are certainly better subject matter experts for their applications this evening. But I did wanna emphasize that these are projects uh, that the town uh, expects to have go forward that have been endorsed by community preservation. And so I'm here tonight to lend my support to them but also to offer the finance committee uh, some hope of um, um, what I think will be a better uh, process going forward starting in June. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Joe, and, and, and thank you for that uh, explanation. And uh, I agree with everything you said. <laughs> so with that, uh, and how I'd like to do it is we'll, uh, you know, we'll let uh, the presenters present and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll ask questions of that. And then we'll move on to the next presenter. And when we'll, we're done with the last presenter, we'll, uh, we'll uh, end discussion on the presentations and then go back uh, and starting at the first uh, article and then uh, entertain a motion and a second and then discussion and then we'll vote on that article. Uh, so with Elaine, uh, if you're ready to 
uh, tell us about the uh, about your article. Uh, sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I'm, I'm really pleased to be here tonight to discuss this article. Um, there are many reasons why this particular piece of property uh, should be preserved, uh, you know, for conservation, for recreation, and it is a high profile site. Many people drive by, they enjoy driving by there and seeing the cranberry bog. People love to walk the path around the bog. Um, it's a very highly visible part of town. Unfortunately, the cranberry business is not what it used to be. Um, one of the things to consider, aside from the conservation and recreation uh, parts of this, is that preserving this land uh, will also help the health of Hinckley's Pond. You may all remember that not too long ago, a half a million dollars was used for an alum treatment of Hinckley Pond. If this land is preserved, that would no longer be a necessity. Um, with the cranberry farming discontinued, uh, this property would then um, not produce uh, some of the phosphorus that goes into that pond that might have been there because of uh, you know fertilization and other things. So um, it is an important piece of land. It, the bike trails on either side. Um, and also, if you think ahead, um, Barhead, uh, stage eight of the wastewater plan uh, encompasses this property, this area. Uh, if this was preserved, it would reduce the new need for sewers in that area. So that's another plus. Um, also, as we all know, collaboration between the town and Harwich Conservation Trust has always had wonderful outcomes. We have so many wonderful pieces of land in this town that the folks in our town appreciate so much for the, the walking trails and the beautiful scenery and the preservation and trying to keep Harwich uh, the, the town that it's always been and to attract people to our natural wonders and, and our, our beautiful landscape and our ponds. So uh, I appreciate your consideration Bring this uh, article, um, the Real Estate and Open Space Committee wholeheartedly, unanimously endorsed this, and we've all been working very hard um, to see that this article comes to you today. And hopefully you will uh, agree with us that it is a necessary uh, article and that this land does need to be preserved. Because as the current owners have told us, they would like to see it preserved. But if this doesn't go through, um, they have had offers from developers. Uh, so the bottom line is conservation, development, which would mean six houses, maybe seven on that property. So that's you know something to keep in mind. So I thank you. And Michael, maybe you have more to add? Uh, one one sec, please. Uh, but, uh, uh, either Michael or Elaine, if you could uh, explain the, the funding mechanism. It's kind of a joint venture between the town uh, uh, for the total purchase of the land there, which I think lends uh, credit to, to the to the article. Yeah. Michael. It, shall I? Thank you. Yes, thanks, Elaine. Thanks, John. And, and thank you, Tom, president of Harwich Conservation Trust, for being here with us. Michael Locke, executive director of Harwich Conservation Trust. And we're, uh, we're pleased to uh, partner with the town on this proposal. The uh, Real Estate Open Space Committee's CPA funding application for open space funds as part of the Towns Community Preservation Fund is in the amount of 360000 to be contributed toward the land purchase price, which is 732500 Additional due diligence, uh, land conveyancing costs, initial stewardship steps, including an ecological restoration feasibility study underway, 
will total approximately 67,500. So when you add the 67,500 to 732,500, we have a total project cost at this point to facilitate the land acquisition part of 800,000. If town meeting voters vote favorably on uh, this $360,000 CPA open space fund article in May, then there is a, an anonymous challenge donor who's willing to step forward um, to offer 220,000 towards HCT's fundraising effort. Uh, note that 800,000 minus 360,000 would leave 440,000 left. This challenge owner would issue a $220,000 challenge. So we would have to raise another 220,000 from the community to reach the total $800,000 goal. So again, it represents another important partnership opportunity between HCT and the town to, as Elaine uh, described, protecting uh, land to protect the water quality of both Hinkley's Pond, in this case, the Herring River, um, as well as the scenic views from the Cape Cod Rail Trail, which I, I might also add adds an economic benefit to the town. We know that people, uh, both residents and visitors, uh, using the rail trail, especially visitors in the summer season, um, either biking into town through the rail trail or perhaps parking at the town's uh, largest adjacent parking area to the rail trail right there on Headwaters Drive, um, bring business uh, to the town. Uh, we are noticing in this pandemic time more people than ever before using walking trails and uh, using the bike trail. Certainly we want to preserve the scenic views um, from this portion of the rail trail that are attributed to this property. And as Elaine mentioned, it's a ready to go walking trail destination once it's preserved. So um, that's some more background and the acquisition structure relative to the Real Estate and Open Space Committee's proposed uh, contribution. I'd like to pose a question for a point of clarification. So this is Brian. Michael, the uh, the bog that you're that you're talking about that, as I recall, that's a very historic bog. I think it goes back to about 1845. It's a, a black cranberry bog, if I remember correctly. It has it has a fairly significant heritage here on the Cape. Is it the intention of the owners, regardless of what happens on this property, no longer to farm that bog? <laughs> I don't know about the year that that bog was formed. Um, that would be an interesting history to, to research. To, to your question, yes, the owners, uh, the Jenkins family, um, and note that they're fifth generation cranberry farmers. Uh, they have uh, cranberry bogs in West Barnstable primarily, but this represents a property they own um, out east, as it were, from, from their main uh, place in West Barnstable. A uh, very difficult decision for them to discontinue farming after their October 2020 harvest, but that's the decision they made. Um, there are economic pressures beyond their control. We know local growers are under immense financial pressure because of oversupply from areas like the Midwest and Canada. And there are other issues uh, such as available labor and other costs um, that just don't make this profitable anymore. So yes, they have decided to discontinue farming at this yeah, site no, as of October 2020. No, no dispute about the business at all, Mike. Uh, in fact, I'm just sitting here, you can't see the other side of my computer, but I'm looking at pictures I took out in that bog during the harvest last year. So I, I'm very familiar with it. I know how valuable and special a piece of land it is. I just wanted to get that clarification on the record that regardless, they're no longer gonna farm it. Um, because I think that makes a huge difference rather than taking a historic parcel off that a lot of traditionalists would really feel the loss of, the owners themselves have made the active decision they're not going to farm it any further. So now it's a matter of straight up preservation. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Mike, I have a, I have a question on the, uh, the funding. The um, That's great that you have someone that's willing to match some donations. Are you comfortable that the conservation trust can raise what they need to raise? I think that if if um, 
town meeting voters see fit to vote favorably um, on this uh, article, CPA open space funding article, then that will encourage that donor to step forward with that $220,000 challenge. And then yes, um, with that kind of challenge in place, that will really create hopefully the momentum to raise the remaining match of 220. Thank you. Um, would you like to mention anything, Tom, or you're, you're fine? Uh, thank you very much, John. I, the only point that I might underscore is the practical reality that HCT as an organization is a very small organization. And when you think about our, our fundraising constituency, it's basically people who live in the town of Harwich. So it's a very small number. So we have been extraordinarily dependent upon and successful in over time our various partnerships with the town of Harwich um, in, 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 in most of our major land acquisitions. So um, uh, I think, Elaine, to your point, we've had these very successful connections and, and partnerships with the town before, and we see this as, as another one in the making. Uh, thank you, Tom. And uh, Michael and Elaine, thank you very much. If no one else in the committee has a, uh, a question, we can uh, move on to the next presenter, which is, is Mike Locke uh, for his article on the uh, on the, the Heritage Trail at the uh, Robert Smith uh, Bogs on Cole Brook. Uh, Michael. Thanks. Thanks, John, and okay. thank you, committee members. This is a, an exciting project, and just by way of background, uh, Harwich Conservation Trust was initially going to seek uh, 300,000 in Community Preservation Act uh, recreation funds for two recreational um, access enhancements to the very popular 66 acre Robert F. Smith Colebrook Preserve right there in Harwich Port, uh, right off Bank Street. Uh, but recognizing the number of requests that uh, were being made at the Community Preservation Committee, uh, we reduced that to this $150,000 um, proposal for the design, permitting, and construction of a nearly half mile wheel trail accessible loop um, intended to be done to Americans with Disability Act standards. Um, it's pictured uh, on uh, a graphic that is part of the community preservation um, funding application. And um, I did seek input from the Harwich Accessibility Rights Committee, but that committee currently does not have a quorum. The uh, Harwich Recreation and Youth Commission did unanimously support the project. Um, thank you, Eric Beebe, for your leadership with your commission and toward that end. Uh, I just want to give you a little bit of background in, in terms of the town HCT partnership at this site to date. Many of you are aware of the Colebrook Ecological Restoration Project and the partnership among the town HCT, the state's division of ecological restoration, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And um, one of the benefits um, the town is very interested in is the reduction of nitrogen that flows uh, through this watershed to Sacquatucket Harbor. And it's estimated through the town's comprehensive wastewater management plan that there could be a savings of up to um, $6 million in reduced sewering needs once this eco-restoration uh, project is um, completed. Well, as part of the water quality benefits and the habitat diversity benefits, there's also a visitor enhancement benefit uh, by improved trails and interpretation um, of the landscape and history of the area. In one way, we really wanted to accentuate and enhance the visitor um, experience is by creating this wheelchair uh, accessible loop. So people of all ages and all physical abilities um, could really continue the tradition of connecting um, in the local community with the natural um, world around them. Um, it's really the natural elements that hold us here and uh, draw so many more to this special corner of the Cape. Um, and so um, 
I think there's also an, an interesting uh, and special connection with um, Robert F. Smith, the namesake of the property, who was uh, also one of the founding trustees of Harwich Conservation Trust. He's a very active Harwich citizen. He was president of the organization for the first 27 years. He also happened to have a physical disability um, known as a fasciocapulo uh, humeral muscular dystrophy. It was a progressive genetic muscle disorder. Uh, in which the muscles of the face, shoulder blades, and upper arms were affected, among other uh, muscle groups. And eventually, Bob had to maintain his mobility with a motorized wheelchair. Uh, he did so with dignity uh, and continued to work uh, in the community through HCT with an altruistic vision to benefit uh, the full Harwich community in, in Cape Cod by preserving these natural areas. And so to create a wheelchair accessible loop at the Robert S. Smith Colebrook Preserve would be a fitting way to provide so many uh, access for so many others that um, to live life with uh, physical disabilities, but still seek ways to connect with the outdoors. Um, so thank you for considering um, uh, this uh, proposal uh, before you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, again, Tom, would you anything to say there? <laughs> Thank you, John. No, uh, you know, perhaps other than just the sentimental piece that it was such an irony that Bob Smith, wheelchair bound, worked so hard to preserve so many properties that he would not himself be able to access in his lifetime. Uh, thank you, Todd. Does anyone on the committee uh, have a question of Michael? Uh, Mike, I, I do have a question, Mike, and uh, it, it, you know it was uh, it was raised in the selections meeting on Monday night. I'm sure you're well aware of that that issue. And uh, just for uh, clarification to the board, uh, what is your your backup plan if for some reason you don't have access to the old fire station? Thanks for raising that, John. Yes, I did. I, I heard that at the at the selectmen's meeting, the joint meeting with the finance committee. So, so naturally, our, our preferred access would be um, the site there at the former fire station, the former Harbor Master Workshop uh, property. Uh, and uh, as an aside, HCT looks forward to um, submitting a proposal to the selectmen when the selectmen uh, issue their request for proposals to the community for use or uh, disposition of of that um, of that property. Um, if uh, for whatever reason uh, HCT is is um, not successful toward that end of uh, uh, maintaining parking uh, at that area. We do have um, an option two, an alternative further south, a little bit south of uh, where you see Hemian's farm sign there on the easterly side of Bank Street. Uh, you see some split rail along that uh, road edge. Um, that, that is a, a much smaller uh, space, but that one we would consider as a, as a backup plan. Certainly the preferred option is where the parking is right now at the former Harbor Master workshop area. Uh, thank you, Michael. Uh, if there's no other questions uh, from the committee, uh, we'll move on to Eric and his three articles. And uh, and I thought it would, would, would move along the meeting more easier if we didn't vote on them. Uh, Michael, Tom, and Elaine, I'm, I'm happy to, to email you uh, the results of the vote <laughs> after the meeting uh, if you do not wish to, to stay on. Uh, so what, whatever you choose to do. and. Uh, Speaking for myself, I, I think your articles presented will be reviewed favorably, but uh, I will set the, we'll take a vote on it later. Uh, Eric, if you want to start with your uh, presentations, if you want to start with the, you know, the first one that you're going to do three of them there, and uh, yep. the first one, uh, the first, first park, Van, Van Pond, Van Pond, okay, you got it. Thank you. Eric. Uh, all right, so I'm Eric Beebe, I'm the Recreation Director, for those of you who don't know me. Um, our first one on the list is our Sand Pond Revitalization Project. Um, this is technically a phase two to a project. Phase one was the funding for a new restroom facility. Um, the finishing touches are going on that um, RFP to get put out. 
But this one focuses on um, new other things to update the pond and uh, make it more user friendly and uh, kind of bring the popularity back to the pond that it used to have. Um, this uh, particular article is requesting $83,500. Um, it includes the replacement of the split rail fencing that runs along the beach um, on the way down the stairs. Um, it also includes um, putting in a small playground facility. I wouldn't even call it a complete playground. It's playground apparatus. Um, it's a it's a swing swing set, and it's a couple of spinners. And then the the real big ticket item is the surfacing, the um, uh, the safety surfacing that we have to put in with that. Um, also associated with the cost is a couple of picnic areas um, with picnic tables, things like that, for families to gather and uh, you know while they're using the playground and on the beach for the day. Um, and then anything else uh, that's on the plan includes you know taking down any dead or dying trees. I know there's a lot of controversy about taking the nature away from sand pond, which we are not intending to do in any way. Um, we just want, we wouldn't take out, take out any trees that weren't dead or dying. Um, but that's the, basically the gist of the project. And what we're looking to do there is um, we used to have lifeguards. We used to have swim lessons there. Um, we saw attendance at the pond by patrons going down every year. Uh, significantly. Um, we moved our swim lessons to the to Long Pond, Fernandez Bog, and it, it peaked right back up to where it used to be. Um, but we feel like Sand Pond with the, you know, the nice natural setting, big parking lot is really an unused uh, asset for the town. Um, we'd like to complete this phase and maybe a couple other little things and uh, maybe bring back lifeguards, uh, swim lessons, kayak rentals, um, and then it could even become an asset for the town financially if we can put a gate, gate attendant back there eventually and a charge for people to park in that big parking lot. Um, so that's the gist of it. It's, it's mostly, like I said, fencing, playground apparatus, picnic area uh, for this phase of the project. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. What members have any questions of Eric on this, on this particular project? I have a question, John. And sure. uh, uh, it, it seems that you're building uh, that project back slowly, one one piece at a time. Have, do you have the whole plan worked out? How much will it cost the town to have lifeguards uh, and everybody else who you mentioned, uh, rather than just this, you know? Yep. And so. Well, uh, we did we, we did look into that um we don't have an exact cost for that you know it would have two lifeguards we never have one lifeguard at a spot um if you were to have two lifeguards and a gate attendant um we see that the the money coming into the general fund from daily passes would easily cover that cost for those three personnel that would be there daily um so that that's the answer to that um i i think we'd at least cover the cost if not make some money on that we would also be covering the cost of doing the work down there, the, the, the buildings and everything else. You mean like the maintenance on the bathroom and or yeah, and also the building that you it's not built yet, is it? There well, there's no building. Oh, you mean the new the new restroom? Is that what you're speaking of? That's right. No, that's right. That's that's money that's already been uh, allocated by last year's CPC. But it hasn't been used yet. No. Okay, so. So I think it's helpful if you have a plan that covers every, everybody so they know what's, they, what it's about. Incidentally, three of my children learn how to swim there, so I, I'm, I'm familiar with the, the place. But it, it, it's it's difficult to, to, to put a lot of money into some place that has some difficulties and we can use money for other things, that's all. That's why I think you should need to have a full plan. Mr. Chairman. Whatever that is. We do have a full plan. Mr. Chairman. Right. Yeah, um, I would just like to comment as well. Eric, my children, all three of my daughters also learned to swim at Sand Pond. I personally view it as a tremendous asset for the town. I think putting what is a relatively small amount of money into this will immediately create a resource that people will flock to. It's The location is right, huge parking lot, exactly as you say. It's a beautiful setting, the water is beautiful. Uh, it seems like a, a very a, a very good use of funds to invest back in this resource and bring our visitors and our residents back to it. 
really nice, really nice piece of property. I have a ton of great photographs and memories from my children learning there. So I couldn't agree more. Great, great resource. Uh, John, go ahead, Dan. Yeah, John, I just want to make a comment. Uh, I have five tiny tot grandchildren, and when it's very windy on, on the beaches, we go to Sand Pond, uh, and, and, and they do their swimming and their playing and that kind of thing there. So it's, it's, it's just a great, great, great uh, yeah. natural resource. Yeah. Thanks. Well, uh, I just have a couple quick questions, uh, Eric, and I, I, sure. I missed it. Uh, one on the parking lot is it is it is the parking lot currently covered by a beach sticker? If you buy a beach sticker, or I missed. It. Yeah, it, it is covered by the beach sticker. So you need to have a beach sticker to park there, a town beach sticker. Um, but we're not selling daily passes there at the moment. Uh, and how how well? I, I think you pretty aggressively uh, look. Uh, uh, patrol the, the the parking lots for beach stickers, don't you? I, <laughs> oh yeah, we uh, we have two parking enforcement officers every summer uh, that go around. Last year, I believe we wrote uh, twenty twenty eight thousand dollars worth of parking tickets. Um, yeah. But I think we wrote, you know, in total about four hundred or five hundred tickets. And at Sand Pond, we we may have written about fifty or sixty. I don't have it in front of me, but right around there. Okay, I, that was the, I, I I didn't know if it was part of the beach stickers. Uh, program or not, but yep. it is. And th did I miss uh, that building that's there now is coming down, right? Yeah, that's the plan to take that down to make room for the uh, the, the playground area and the picnic area. Um, the building that there is there now, um, while somewhat structurally sound, is uh, the, the amount of repairs that would be needed on it would far outweigh the worth of the building. I, I, I missed that piece too. Uh, and then one last uh, commentary is uh, my wife took swimming lessons there at six years old. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> since we're throwing in swimming lessons and uh, in uh, in uh, of course, John's so wife a lot, a lot older wife. now. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you, Eric, for uh, San Pond. Next one is uh, oh, um, what you want. Uh, Brooks Park Lighting, I guess, right? Brooks or, Park Lighting, sure. sure. Uh, okay. So. So this request is um, it's for $125,000 and it's to complete the funding for Brooks Park Phase 5. So that therefore it's called Brooks Park Lighting Project Phase 5 Part 2. Um, this is the, the culmination of our whole Brooks Park project that's been going on for years now with the pickleball courts and tennis courts and basketball courts. Um, this one, um, we did receive funding in the amount of $333,500 at last year's town meeting for this project. Since then, the town engineer and the town administrator's office contracted an engineering and design company to take a look at the project. They determined that there were things missing from the original quote that should have been in there and also things that needed to be altered and changed, um, certain types of lights that are more appropriate for the area and the activities that go on there. Um, so this is to, to complete that funding for that project. Um, and what it's gonna do is replace all the lights um, around the tennis courts, pickleball courts, and basketball court. Um, it's actually gonna be all LED lighting. Um, so it's gonna reduce the cost of the lights to run, um, as well as it's gonna significantly reduce ambient lighting in the area. Um, we're gonna reduce the amount of poles from 12 to seven, uh, but it's gonna cover more area, um, including parking lots, uh, places, people, places people may walk through the park, um, and the basketball courts too. Um, so this is really the, the final part of our Brooks Park revitalization project um, that's seen a lot of success so far. Um, and, and the current lighting system now is failing fast. Um, so, you know, we're looking forward to, to completing this project uh, with this part of it. I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sure, go ahead, Brian. So Eric, uh, I think the, I, I can speak for other members of this committee and that our biggest concern, and I know John and I have talked about this, is that this will have enough money to really get this thing done. Because, I mean, we've seen now all these different phases and, and constant inadequacy and lack of resources. Now you have a contingency showing of $8,800 approximately. Are you going to have enough money with this appropriation to get it done? 
because this I think everybody wants this done. Yep, we, we will have enough money to get this done. Uh, we've done, like I said, we've done extensive uh, engineering and design studies with an outside firm that was contracted. Um, we've been through the numbers many times, myself with Joe and Griffin from town, um, and we are confident that this will complete the project for us. So Eric, I know you can't hard quote this because the regulations around it, but have you soft quoted this to know you have vendors that are gonna deliver this project at that price for you? Because you can get a soft quote, you don't have to hard quote it. Yes, we do. Between the design company and consulting with some some uh, lighting companies, we do. I mean, I think everybody at town meeting would be horrifyingly disappointed were we not to have adequate resources after yet another appropriation. I just want to make certain you've requested enough funding to get this thing done. We all want to see it done. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Joe. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, Brian. Thanks for that. But just to follow on that, I want to emphasize what Eric was saying before. What was missing in that project was electrical engineering. Um, it, it wasn't in the original project. It wasn't in the original scope. Um, the positive that came out of that, however, was being able to utilize the electrical engineer, not just for the Brooks Park lighting, uh, but while we were in the area, the White House field lighting as well. And so, um, I agree with you that we need to get this done and this needs to be the last of the appropriations on it. And as Eric has said, we're confident of that, but I also want people to take comfort that we're, we're doing things with a stronger eye towards what needs to be done procedurally so that in the future, starting with fiscal year 23, we, we have a truer sense of all the costs. And very quickly, Mr. Chairman, that's why as you heard with the administration budget Monday evening, there's also uh, funds set aside that if there's a project that has been say approved this year or last year, and it comes up that there was design need, we have some money in administration. So they don't have to hold it up. We don't have to tie into the uh, funds that are already earmarked and we can get the appropriate design work done. So I'm, I'm hopeful that the combination of all of those plus the new procedures going forward will get us to uh, a better quality uh, requests that are all encompassing and that we can do the procurement at once and get it done quickly. Mr. Chairman, yes, Brian. I'd just like to respond, Joe, there's no disrespect intended to you or, or Eric in either case. My, my concern, and I've had this conversation with lots of people that are my friends here in town, is that we just want to know that the, the appropriation will, will provide the adequate resources. I think that's everyone's biggest concern, that everyone was well-intentioned in the past and yet it didn't happen. We, we simply want to know that you'll have what you need to get it done. That's all. Absolutely, and and no disrespect was taken. Um, I think uh, your comments this evening are helpful uh, because we need to have these answers ready for town meeting, and I think you're spot on. Thank you, Brian uh, and Joe. Anyone else in the committee? Okay, uh, I, just a quick comment. Uh, you know, I agree with Brian. What Brian has said, and, and you know, Nigel have talked about this on a number of occasions on properly vetting of these projects. And I know you're making tremendous headway uh, to making that happen. Uh, so thank you, Joe and, and Brian, for those questions. Okay, Eric, uh, Memorial Field, uh, Memorial Softball Field, or something. Yep, um, this is a project request um, in the amount of forty thousand one hundred and eighty-one dollars. Um, for the refencing at Senior Memorial Softball Field. Uh, Senior Memorial is one of the two softball fields way back behind White House Field down the dirt, well, not so much dirt road anymore. Uh, there's Potter Field and Senior Memorial Field. Uh, we did Potter Field fencing a couple years ago. Uh, this is to redo all of Senior Memorial Field fencing, uh, backstop, side fences, home run fence, um, everything. Um, the reason we're doing this, the, the current fence is rusting leaning, the poles are, are leaning significantly, and it is the original fence from when the field was built. Um, so it, it has never been replaced before now. And uh, it has been maintained, we've done patchwork here and there, but it's gotten to the point now where any any maintenance or repairs is going is, is gonna, um, it's not gonna make sense financially, um, whereas we can just replace it in a, as a whole. Um, we, you know, we, we use that field significantly. The senior softball uh, league in town uses that one um, almost exclusively. There's other groups that use it as well, um, but it's a, it's a great asset for the town and we, we just want to keep it up 
and uh, that's what this project is uh, looking to do. Thank you, Eric. Uh, any questions from the committee? Yeah. Uh, Eric, I have a question. The estimate you show in the package is yep. an estimate that's almost two years old. Yep. So I'm, again, my question goes to the fact that will you, are you sure you're going to have adequate resources to complete the project? I think that that's an obsession with certainly with, with for me, I want to know that we fund <laughs> the degree, that it can be done. Yep. We, uh, I actually, yeah, the, the estimate that's in there was from 2019. Yep. Since then we had gotten a new estimate. We didn't have the paper estimate in hand as of yet, but we did know the number. So the new number is factored into the request. Um, if you look, I don't know if you guys have the actual applications in front of you. Yes. Yeah. Um, if you look at the breakdown. 34,940. Uh, that was the new number for the fencing, the updated one. And, and they'll hold that price for you till when, Eric? They're holding it right now. They don't anticipate any change in it. Um, I double checked on that just recently as well. You understand we're not going to go to town meeting for 60 days approximately so yep. the last thing yep. i want again is for them to jump the price right after town meeting yeah and uh we don't anticipate any significant changes and we you know if there are any small changes that's why we build in the contingency that's in there okay thank you yep. thank you brian uh any other questions from the uh from the Shall I have a question? sure go ahead dan Eric, does the softball field generate any revenues for the town? It does. Um, the revenue that comes in uh, primarily is from the Senior Softball League. Um, they pay to use that field, um, and they use it significantly for almost three seasons out of the year. They're there from uh, as soon as the snow melts to uh, right before it starts snowing again, basically. Thank you. Uh, no. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Following up on the earlier questions, uh, and uh, based on what Eric said about the updated quotes, uh, we did have department head meetings over the last several months. Uh, I've worked with the department heads to make sure that they've vetted their funding requests. Um, so what Eric's told you is that he's gone through that exercise. And I also just want to let the committee know that we're already working on um, preliminary procurement steps for the articles that are in the warrant. Uh, we're not going to go too far afield in case any of them are pulled, but we will be ready to, to do the um, RFP, IFB, or quote processes in anticipation of the money being ready to be spent on July 1. So we will endeavor to have all of those procurements underway as quickly as possible. Perfect. Thank you, Joe. That's, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great, great news to hear stuff like that. Uh, anyone else in the committee? Okay, that concludes uh, Eric's uh, presentation on the rec, uh, rec articles. Uh, we're moving on to Robin Kelly, uh, administrator at the cemetery. And Robin, I guess if you want to start with the first one, the uh, East Harwich Methodist Church Gravestone Renovation Project. Mike. Is there any way I can share my screen or no? If you know how to do it, go right ahead. <laughs> Okay. There you go. Good job, Robin. <laughs> I tried last week and I blew it ho horribly. So go ahead. Thank you. Let's see if it, let's see if I can get it to keep going. All right. So um, so this is the uh, Greystone Conservation Preservation article. It is for a hundred and two thousand two hundred dollars. It's one hundred and two thousand plus ten percent contingency fees. Um, the project description is to clean, consolidate, and repair and set of the gravestones. There's 65 total repairs. Um, 209 need to be reset or have new foundations. But in all, 265 memorials will be clean, consolidated, the headstones and footstones. Um, so the total number of monuments that will be touched completely are 316. So. Um, this is a very historic uh, cemetery. It's one of our oldest in town. It has um, a lot of historic significance. We have Revolutionary War soldiers there. This is Ebenezer Eldridge's stone, which is leaning at currently. Um, and he died the 25th of February, 
Okay, this is the cemetery itself and um, all the CPC articles I do for gravestones uh, are very thoroughly done. I uh, highlight the maps, I say what is broken, what ones are leaning, what needs to be repaired. This is my, I think, seventh um, monument restoration project through the town since it started and I think my first one was in 2006. So each one of the monuments is divided into uh, its location within the cemetery. And I say what the monument has, I show them a picture of the monument and what repair needs to be done. Um, it's a lot of money. So you wanna make sure that everything that needs to be finished for each monument is actually done. Um, we require that they do uh, photographic evidence through the entire restoration project. They have to photograph the monument before. They have to write all the materials they use to preserve it and then photographic evidence after. Um, this year, we are gonna make the, the, this article be digital so that they'll be available online. So if anyone wanted to look and pull up one of these monuments, they could see the before, during, and after for the um, restoration. So preserving the gravestones in East Howitch Methodist is in the best interest. Many people come to this cemetery, has a, an extensive um, Mayflower descendants that are buried on these grounds. Um, a lot of the stones in the cemetery are over 200 years old. I don't know if anyone's been over there to check it out um, on your committee. Um, this is a letter from the church. They're in, um, they want us to move forward with this project and a lot of their parishioners signed the other letter on the other side. Um, so we are, it was unanimously supported by the historic um, commission. And um, we would like these gravestones cleaned and uh, preserved so that everyone would be able to see them. There has been some um, concern by people raised that the cemetery itself, the land is owned by the um, church. Um, so I did a little research in the act of 1948, chapter 277 was this act authorized the town of Howitz to receive and administer these properties. And not only that, but all of these properties here, the Baptist Cemetery, the Smith Cemetery, the Chase Cemetery, North Howitz, Kelly, Harding Rider, Seth Eldridge, the and the Old Methodist Cemetery. Um, we were to take them and to care for the cemetery space, but only for the cemetery portion of it. So this act, uh, was passed in the legislature and then it had to go before town meeting. It went before town meeting in 1948. And then in the annual report of 1949, it passed unanimously at town meeting. So um, we are having legal counsel look at this um, property to make sure that um, the concerns of um, the public is that we can use CPC funds to fund this project. Um, I'm not a lawyer, so we'll be waiting for the attorney to get back to us on that. So Robin, I have a question. Okay. Sure. Oh, go ahead, Brian. So Robin, do, are you saying that in fact, this, this cemetery property has been conveyed to the town of Harwich? I, that, uh, Act conveyed their um, association rights to the town. And so they all had associations and they all had uh, perpetual care funding. And the perpetual care funding was transferred. If you pull up the 1948 book for all of those cemeteries were transferred into the town perpetual care fund. And I, I understand that. I guess what I'm, what I'm really asking is has the cemetery itself, in fact, been conveyed? I understand that the, the right and responsibility to care for the stones in the cemetery have been conveyed to the town, but has the, does the cemetery remain the property of the church or does the cemetery remain the property of the town of Harwich? Uh, I think Joe wants to answer. Yep, go ahead, Joe. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Community Preservation Chair and I are meeting with council on Tuesday morning. Uh, the CPC chair met with him today uh, they did go over paperwork that appears to show that the town uh, took those um, uh, properties by eminent domain. So we're still vetting that, but it appears that the town is within its rights to go forward on the project because the town has uh, rights to the uh, area in question. 
Um, so again, we should expect a definitive answer on that by Tuesday morning. Okay, great. Thanks, Joe. Joe, Thank you. are you for the question, Brian, at all? No. Thank okay. you. Anyone John, I have, yeah, sure. I have a question. Ahead, uh, Robin, I seem to recall like, when I sat on CPC and you had some projects before us, you said something about, I think, that the town has a statutory responsibility to maintain all cemeteries in the town. Is, is that, is my thinking no, not, on that accurate? Not all, all the cemeteries. So we don't maintain uh, Holy Trinity. There's a couple cemeteries in town that are privately owned that we do not maintain. Okay, so then you only, we only have responsibility for the town. Total, uh, town owned or, uh, or cemeteries uh, that were abandoned in the town. So we are by statute from the state, if there is a cemetery that gets abandoned within the town, municipalities are responsible to take them over. If that uh, Maybe that was it then. Okay. So if a, if a cemetery that's owned by a, uh, a church, uh, is in disrepair. The town has no authority with that cemetery, with, with the church in terms of getting that uh, cemetery properly maintained. Well, normally if it comes in disrepair, then the, then the town can take it to oversee it, but they would have to make, just like we did that at town meeting, you just can't walk in on someone's property and take it. I think okay. they're a process. But the town does have some avenue if you will to pursue if, if a cemetery gets to the point where it's in disrepair and the church refuses to do anything about it that's correct thank you anyone any other board member have a question uh i i, I don't either uh but uh robin if you want to move on to your evergreen flag uh sure. memorial project thank Hold you on. see if i can pull that one up <laughs> okay so I am extremely excited about this project. Um, this is the Veterans Memorial Circle, which is at Evergreen. The total amount for this project is $48,385. Um, we are going to erect, um, it'll have the American flag in the center. It'll be on a 35 foot pole and we are surrounded by the six branches of the service. And um, so it'll be the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, and now the Space Force. Apparently, they have been added, so I had to add those. Those weren't in my original um, application. Um, we are going to have electrical service brought in to the Veterans Circle, up to the gazebo. So this is the, um, if people who haven't been into Evergreen uh, Cemetery, this is where the gazebo sits in the center circle. Um, it is on a 7.28 acres of this section of cemetery. Evergreen total is 19 acres. So a lot of people use this cemetery. And when we designed this in 2008, we always envisioned having the veteran circle in the center, as you can see by the plan down below. Um, it has like a meandering circular uh, way through the cemetery and the veteran circles in the center across from the veterans burial area. But many people are in here walking each day over in the East Howitch. So this is um, kind of what I envisioned. And this is another veterans memorial circle, which is off Cape. And this is how the flag will be in the center and our flags will be around it. So this just gives you an example of what it's going to look like. So this is a letter of support from Will Remillard. He was a veterans agent and um, he's very excited about this project as well. Um, uh, he says that this array of uh, flags will serve to honor our nation's veterans and display the pride and patriotism of our community. We also had a letter from um, Jeff Beatty um, and we had a letter from Shawnee Carroll who's also our veterans agent. Um, so. Every year we've always had our veteran services at uh, Island Pond Cemetery, which I love, everyone knows. Um, but it's a very hilly uh, cemetery and it's very difficult for older veterans to navigate in there. The parking is not great. This cemetery is uh, completely flat, wide open. It is gonna be able to have benches all around the center. There'll be plenty of parking and people will be able to navigate and get to this uh, area for all of our services. I am also working um, 
this is just a phase one of the project. In phase two will be um, next year, we're doing a uh, Civil War Memorial and a um, Revolutionary War Memorial. And I've been in contact with the um, DAR and they are going to be giving us um, funding for some of the project. They might even give us funding for this year. But we've also drafted letters for to um, local veterans groups in the area the Elks and the American Legion. And we're hoping to defray some of the cost even of this $48,000. Um, so by the time it goes to town meeting, it could be a little bit less. So um, I'm very excited. This was unanimously supported by both um, the CPC um, and everyone that we've gone through, the recreation department. And um, if, if anyone has any questions, I'd love to answer. Do you and the board have any questions? Angelo? No, no questions. Nope. Okay. Uh, Brian, no one? Yeah. Uh, just a couple. I have a couple. If no one else says, I have a couple quick ones, Robin. Uh, sure. Thank you, for your, thank you for your presentation. I don't know how to read uh, my screen back. Okay. <laughs> Hold on a second. I'm trying to. Uh, okay. Hold on. So there we go. There you go. Good job. Good job. Uh, uh, the first question on this particular project is: uh, Are any town resources being used to help defray? Well, you're helping you to defray costs from using outside contractors. We are using in-house contractors, and you have if, if in-house contractors are being used, you have an estimate of what that cost is. I am, we are not using in-house contractors to do, to do any of this. We, um, it is going to have to have electrical service and it has to come quite a ways into the cemetery. Um, I think I can't, let me see if I can get the exact feet of that. I think it's on the quote if it's in your packet, but that That's is the yeah it is it is a lot to get all of the electrical services we have to light all of the flags and we're going to have a microphone there so we'll be doing um we'll be having quite a few events at this uh in this cemetery so it's 2250 feet yeah it's it's quite a way well, so we're not planning to use any of uh dpw's men or equipment for this no no, okay. That's what I'm. There's uh, you know, back to a couple of the t talks. We, we're, we're trying to find total costs on projects, whether in-house, out-house, or whatever. And then you mentioned this is a phased project. Uh, right. The next phase being the Civil War uh, phase. So is, are, is, are there any more phases after after phase two? Um, I, I not at this time. Um, the Revolutionary War. We have a lot of. Revolutionary War and Civil War soldiers that are from this town. Um, I am in the process of going through the Civil War soldiers right now. The book is like 800 pages long. I'm on page 400 and I already have 60 something Civil War veterans from the town of Howitch. Um, so I think it's going to be significant. It's probably going to be around at least 100. Um, so that memorial will be uh, substantial. And so the DAR really wants to be involved in this um, so that that way they can help us get some funding for it. Thank you. That concludes my questions. Anyone else? And uh, uh, we'll move on to, to the next one. And, and Robin, if you want to stick on, you stay on the call. You're more than welcome. I'm, I'm happy to send you an email after the, after the uh, meeting to let you know. So okay. your choice. All right. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, David Spitz from the Brooks Academy uh, Museum Commission. Hello, Hi, everyone. David. Hi, David. I was looking for you. There you are. Hi, David. I'm here. Good. I've been involved in municipal government for good 30 to 40 years. And, and I believe this is the first time I've brought a project of over a million dollars to a board. So that is a little bit daunting. I will say as this project has hit the newspaper and entered into the public consciousness, it has been very reassuring 
you hear the support that I've gotten almost unanimously from the public and from people. A lot of people have been through this building. A lot of other people have seen it and all consider it to be a very important building to the town. The history of this, I only know a little bit since I've been involved in this building since 2017. I will say while working for the town prior to that, I was very much involved in the reconstruction of the Kroll Barn, which has been a very valuable addition to the property. But for years, one of the main sources of funding for the restoration and maintenance work of the building was the Community Preservation Act. Early on, there was not as much detail as the process now requires. But basically, when BAMC, the commission, deemed that it needed money to work on the building, it would apply to CPA and it generally got it and it was generally approved at town meeting. In 2017, we had three existing articles, two from 2008 and 2009 for interior and exterior repairs exactly what those were supposed to be used for was not identified clearly and eventually those two articles were allowed to lapse at the request of cpc the third article was for a study of what needed to be done to the building that study was put together that request to cpc was done in 2014 and relied on two older studies dating back a good 20, 30 years as to the condition of the building. At the time, nobody identified any major needs, but a number of systems needs, a number of smaller needs. So we hired an architect and we identified three things that we wanted to do. We wanted to create climate controlled storage areas for many of the museum artifacts that are sort of Helter Skelter and where they're stored now. And it was determined that the best place to do that would be to clean out the, uh, the old high school bathrooms and other stuff that's stuck in the basement there now, and to use that basement area for climate controlled storage. We wanted better accessibility than the one residential chairlift that currently goes from the first to the second uh, story that almost no one uses. And the architect advised us that we could install a LULA, a limited use, limited access elevator to go and serve basement, first floor and second floor. Those were the two major want items that my commission identified. A third item was while we're doing some of this other work, we would also move the entrance to its historical location um, under, under the columns in the north side of the building. That is not an extensive project. It would require taking the existing ramp that comes up from the parking lot. And instead of turning right, it would turn left. And that was a very simple thing that was added on. We brought that to CPC. I think one of you was on the commission at the time. And we were told, have you done all your homework? Well, our architect had said he had done a visual analysis of the foundation and said, if there are any issues, they can be identified during the design phase for this project. CPC said, no, you have to do a careful structural analysis first. In retrospect, that was very important and very good advice. So during pandemic times and other things, as new town staff were getting up to speed, it took us a while to get going, but we hired, we found a structural engineer last summer uh, someone who has experience with historic buildings and with Cape Cod buildings, a firm called Structures North out of Salem. And the principal of that firm, John Watney, came down, did a day long inspection of the building and said, you know, this building's in pretty good shape, but your foundation needs attention. We thought, okay, maybe two, $300,000. Well, once the costs were added up, it came out to be more than that. And I guess the best way to describe the foundation issues is that on Cape Cod, we have a lot of round stones. 
and round stones don't provide as much foundation support as more jagged stones. So while the, the, the building's in three, three parts, the old, let's see if I've got this right, it's in the reports that have been made available to you and are online, but the older two, the oldest section fully needs to be replaced. The newest section is in good shape with a concrete foundation, but about two thirds of the walls overall need to be replaced because of this original stone work is simply not going to keep the building going for another hundred plus years. So now is the time that that foundation needs to be addressed. To this point, there's been virtually unanimous uh, opinion about that. How much is it going to cost? The structural engineer works with a contractor from Bourne who's familiar with these type of buildings. And he was able to give us a pretty quick cost estimate. We felt this was better than simply taking multipliers out of a construction manual. He visited the site, he provided a cost estimate to the structural engineer, and that is part of the report that was provided to CPC. There was very strong feeling that as long as we were going to have to do both foundation walls, that it would be cost effective to use the space under the entire building. About one third of the building now has a basement, the remaining two thirds and maybe 4060 rather than 3367, but about two thirds of the building should also be fully excavated to provide basement area under there, which could eventually be usable storage. The contractor provided a cost estimate of $840,000 to do that work. Now I've been listening to a number of you ask, well, have you figured out all your contingencies? And I, I believe your town engineer is, is very aggressive in making sure we do have enough money. So he took that 840,000, immediately added 20% for A&E, for architect and engineering design, and for 25% for a construction contingency. That balloons the $840,000 up by another 50% to 1.26 million. We have some existing CPC money left over. So our request that's going, that was approved by CPC and is going to town meeting is 1.15 million. And I'll be glad to explain any of those numbers further either tonight or after that, um, depending on how much you wanna get into it. So that's our request. Our request is to repair the foundation, to excavate the full basement area, to maximize the use of that building, and to do these things before we consider the rest of the things that we want to have happen in that building. What I've been hit with by town administration, by CPC, and to this point by the chair of this, this committee is, well, what else did you have to do there and how much is that gonna cost? We have started to put together a capital plan based on the things from the architect's report that we want to do on other drainage issues that have been identified. And here's the other big ticket item on the lead abatement, similar to what was done at the library that needs to be done to allow the building to be repainted. There's a, the, the most publicly visible area is the peeling paint on the east side of the building as you drive by. We can't fix that until we get the lead abatement taken care of. We know how much it costs for the library. We want to get other cost estimates. At the moment, we're carrying $400,000 to that work. I can't tell you whether that's the right number or not. So we've added up, again, the elevator, the new, a new roof, uh, gutters, downspouts, other for all of this for to deal with water issues, repair the column bases. Those were repaired once before. What needs to be done to those is not extensive, but the structural engineer, in addition to the foundation work, his report includes all of the other structural items that he feels needs to be addressed. And we have included these. We've got four major headings in our very early draft capital plan. Foundation, which is what we're here for tonight. The roof, the exterior, in which the largest part by far is dealing with lead abatement, and the interior which is finishing the basement, 
climate controlled storage, the LULA, low use, low access elevator, assess all wallings, wall and ceilings for needed repairs, and some relocation of the floor plan. All of those items we're currently estimating, including the foundation, brings it up from that 1.2 million up to two and a half million. Those are scary numbers, but I've been asked to try to be comprehensive in terms of what we think the needs are. This is an important building. The foundation has to be addressed. There are a number of other things that we want to address and we think are well worth it for the town. And I'll leave it up to the various committees and town meeting to decide if we're correct on that assessment. John, let me stop there before I shoot myself in the foot too much. And I'd be glad to respond. Mr. Spitz. Uh, Joe, would you like to uh, start off, Joe, with any comments? I mean, you've had a lot more dealings with any of us have had on this project. And well, well, first, we if I could, like I said, I'm here in support of, uh, of David and his efforts. Um, and, and I know uh, firsthand uh, how important this building is and the work that he's been doing. And David, I would say one thing. I think you were remiss in not um, speaking about the additional work you've done, and that is um, he is searching for any number of grants that are available. Uh, we had a brief conversation about um, mass historic preservation grants, which I have some familiarity with. But David is not only advocating for the building for the town, he's advocating for potential funding relief as well. Uh, and and from, from my perspective, and I did pledge to David that uh, unless and until the board tells me to cease and desist, um, this is one of the projects that I consider to be a major cultural heritage icon project. And it's not lost on me that there may be an effort eventually to uh, correct our town seal uh, because of, uh, you know, culturally insensitive uh, references to Native Americans. But the other half of that seal is that building and that's no greater icon than that building on our seal and in our town and so these are staggering numbers but these are staggering numbers that we now we know we may need to reach in support of this building because if we don't um we're going to lose the building and so i do want to put out there on the record the efforts that david has been making not just on the building itself but finding additional ways perhaps to get grant allocations to support the projects so, uh, Mr. Chairman, Hi. Um, I have a couple of questions for, uh, for David. So, so David, I, I live on Parallel Street. I actually live right down the street from the building. I've walked by that building a thousand times since I built my house on Parallel Street. And uh, in all the years I've lived here, I've only been solicited for fundraising at that building one time. And my wife and I gave. My biggest concern with this project is that I, I would like to not see this effort be totally community dependent, that we would be we'd be seeking constantly a town meeting or from the municipal budget of funds to do work that in a normal world would be raised, at least a portion of it would be raised privately through the normal philanthropic channels beyond just granting. Um, if the building has the perceived value, and I, I'm again, I mean no disrespect to Joe or anybody else, but if the value, the value is really measured by the way people who live in the town will ultimately choose to support it. Um, so if, if there is a philanthropic effort that uses its strength and time and energy to defray a portion of this cost, which I believe will be far beyond $3 million, having done work like this in my own professional life, I think this is a, a more than $3 million project, but assume it's $3 million. I do believe that it's going to require an, an indication from the people that live in the town of Harris that this building has perceived value to them that it has to all, all of the people who have spoken this evening. That's my biggest concern, not to dispute or argue the, the val validity of the, the work you've done to this point or the quote that supports the work, but rather to know where will those other dollars come from and what efforts will the museum put forth to raise those funds from community members that will ultimately indicate their support of the project. Okay, thank you, Brian. What we've done this year is to apply for grants. 
The largest of which is to the Cultural Council. We applied for 250,000. They will make that award or not in May, probably right after town meeting, which won't help us any. Um, there also is a historic grant that we will probably pursue in the next round. As far as seeking out the community as a whole, I can't tell you that I've done that yet, but I'm certainly going to take your words under advisement and talk to my board about it. Anything else, Brian, or anyone else in the committee? Yeah, I, I, go ahead, Angela. Oh, you did, Dave. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think you, you, what I heard was that you actually have two things going on. One is getting the building back in good shape, getting the foundation fixed and all of those kinds of things. And, and I can't see anybody wanting to, to, to not get the building fixed and organized. The second part of it is, which I don't understand, is redo the basement and use it for storage. It strikes me that that's do, or building the basement and for doing storage down here. That strikes me as there's other way to do the storage in other places that would be significantly less expensive than, than, than doing it in that function. Um, but I think the, the part of getting the building so it lasts for another 100 years or so is important. I, 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 my thing with this building, and, and again, I live on the street. I, my obsession is that if the building is as valuable as, as is perceived, then the town should rally and be prepared to rally behind making certain that we preserve this building. But if in fact there is universal apathy coming from the people who live in the town of Harwich, unless this is funded by the CPC or some other governmental granting mechanism, I think that's problematic. I think that it means that the building may have lived its purposeful life and it may not be worthy of this reinvestment. So my respectful suggestion to David would be that his board needs to come up with a strategy that says we are not going to be dependent, but rather we are going to be partnered with you. And here is what we are going to do. And, and I know cultural grants. And again, unless you guys get struck by lightning, you are not going to get a quarter of a million from them. I've spent half my life in the cultural world. I don't believe you're going to get a half a million, a quarter million dollar grant from them. So I don't mean to say that to tell you anything other than I think that to get the success you're looking for, this has to have a consensus of town residents and an enthusiastic belief that that building's relevance is as important today as it will be in a hundred years. And that's why we'll preserve it. Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, Dan, did you have something? I'm going to hold back on my comments until we have our own uh, individual okay. meeting. Okay. Thank you, Dan. This is uh, a Mary? much broader comment than just Brooks. Okay. Mary at all or anyone else? Um, uh, I just like to echo some of what Brian has said. I, it, it is a, big pile of money and it would be nice to see some type of an event, some type of fundraising mechanism that got the town involved with it. I, I think Brian's on the money on that and, and couple it with CPC money or other town money. I think that's why we find Harwich Conservation Trust projects palatable because they come to the table as partners. They, they don't come to the table seeking full support where we will take care of them, but rather they step up as partners and they have a strategy that says, if you take us this far, we can get this money to do the rest. And I think that would be equally valuable for, for Brooks. Um, that's the great disappointment. This building, I've, I have spent innumerable numbers of hours walking around it, behind it, inside it. I, I just... I feel like it, it, it has to have relevance to have a, a reason to exist in another 25 or 50 years. Yeah, Brian, I'd just like to comment on that. The, uh, the Conservation Trust has, uh, how shall I say, some friends with very deep pockets. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Like so many not-for-profits do, though, Dan. Yeah. My, my point is that th that work is important. It needs to be done by, by their board as well. 
they need to find friends. They don't have to have the same depth of pocket, but they certainly need to have same, the same kinds of passion and enthusiasm. Uh, uh, David, does, does, the, does the Brooks uh, have a, an association of friends, so to speak, friends of Brooks? All right, the structure is a little bit complicated. The Brooks Museum Commission is a body of the town and answers to the board of yeah. selectmen. Yep, yep, yep. There is a separate historical yes. society, and they have you know, the responsibility for the maintenance of this building lies with the town. I'm sorry, with the, with the restoration of this building. The programs are run by the Historic Society. Yes, they do have fundraising efforts and friends that they have with their efforts. David, this is kind of similar to the Brewster Ladies Library. I mean, the, there are, there's a portion of that responsibility that falls upon the town of Brewster, and there's another portion of this responsibility that is taken upon the Library Association, the Ladies Library Association, and they are very aggressive fundraisers, and they partner with the town of Brewster. Um, and that's that's been a driver for their capital strategy. So again, I, my only comment is I would love to see your organization have a similar strategy that says we are going to be an active partner in this, whether it's you or your affiliate, your affiliate supportive organization. At the end of the day, it, if it just comes off as town dependent, it's problematic, especially I think in this climate. Now, did you have something to say, Joe? Uh, if I may, um, first, sure. I want to make it clear, and, and David uh, um, is spot on, and, and that's the point that I was going to make, that the difference here is this is a municipal building. And the further difference is that the, the, the agreement that we have renewed with the historical society as the tenant, the, the building, the exterior, and all of its environs are the responsibility of the town. And as David has just indicated, absolutely right, the Brooks Academy Museum Commission is an advisory body to the Board of Selectmen. And so that's what I was intimating at the top of this discussion when I said that I, I am here in support of David's efforts for his commission, knowing that this will still have to go back to the Board of Selectmen. But having said that, I, I want to make it clear that I, I understand uh, Brian and Mary where you're all coming from, and, and I agree with that. You know, as a resident and taxpayer as well in this town, I, would, I, I wouldn't hesitate to grab a hat and pass it around because your underlying point, I think, is absolutely spot on. It is a cultural heritage icon in the town. It has been omnipresent in our town for well over a century. And if we intend to keep that going, we all need to get on board with that. But my point this evening is I, I, and I, I think it needs to start um, with the town. I think it needs to start with me. And, and that's why I've said that I've been, uh, you know, supporting David on this because it needs to get a broader level of support. But you're all absolutely right. And, and we, we are a different entity. We are a different structure than Howard's Conservation Trust, Howard's Junior Theater, and others. This is a town building. But, yes, it has to be the town's building of, with apostrophe S. So I totally agree with where you're coming from. And, and, I, and I think the broader message is, is, we, the town, have to leverage any and all opportunities for partnerships and fundraising, without question. I mean, at the end of the day, though, Joe, it ends up being like the Harbor Masters building, which has lost its relevance and therefore it's become surplus and is going to be sold off. So while I, I am not saying that it has lost its relevance, if the perception in the town is that it's lost its relevance, then maybe it is surplus real estate. I, I mean, I, I, again, I live on the street. I'd like to preserve it. But the town has to be supportive of it because otherwise it just looks like we are we are feeding it and feeding it and then the, the whole other side of it is programmatically what takes place within that building that would even begin to cost justify the kinds of dollars we would sink into it that's another concern all separate and apart and believe me i i've lived my whole life supporting cultural buildings but but this one concerns me i again and if i may mr chairman don't disagree and that's where I say the conversations that I mentioned earlier, that when we get out of this town meeting, we're going to pick it up right again right after that. You're absolutely right. We need to have these conversations. We need to have them sooner in the process. And we need to have a better opportunity than uh, the second week in March, 50 days out from town meeting. So that entire process has to change. And I think your points are very well taken on that. Any other uh, board members that have a question of, of David? 
I, I see Sandy just joined us. Uh, before I comment, uh, uh, Sandy, did you have a comment? And, yes, and Sandy, if, if you could keep it very specific and, and precise. Uh, yep. we've, we've, we've been into this conversation now, I don't know for how long, but you've missed a considerable amount. And I, I don't want David uh, to repeat what he's already had, but if you have some quick specific questions, please answer them now. Yeah, um, so if it's already been answered, I'll uh, just let me know and I'll, I'll watch the video later. Um, I, my question was, was there, um, I know Frazier put the quote in for the foundation work. Were there any other contractors sought for estimates on the uh, lifting and foundation work? And then just a quick, sorry, just a quick comment. Um, on the the antique building i'm i love old buildings i live in a 150 year old house that i'm uh repairing um and so um i think uh to brian's point it's great if we do have community support that is always the best but i would say um that uh old buildings aren't always appreciated in the moment but they're still valuable and maybe a future generation might value it more so maybe we we have to look ahead as well so i might push back a little bit on on the thought that if it doesn't have value today well maybe we need to have value in these old buildings um, and that's all i have a significant amount of money on the come i, I mean, got it yeah. we'll be spending a significant amount of and again i love the building but i also look at what goes on in the building i live down the street what goes on in the building that we would choose to annuitize it to three four or five million dollars in the hope that someday, one day, it will find its relevance down the road. That's what I agree. I is agree, it, and I wouldn't. Yeah, and I don't. Real estate, I, or is it in fact contemporary and valuable? I, I agree. Okay, 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 Sandy. Uh, uh, David, if you could ask answer uh, Sandy's question on the uh, sure. multiple bids contracting question. Yeah. We are in the preliminary design stage for the structural engineering. We have a structural engineer that we're very confident in. He has a working relationship with at least one contractor, probably more, but in the time that was available before presenting this to CPC, he was able to get one contractor to come to visit the site and put in a cost estimate. That's the sole basis of what we have for a cost estimate so far. Thank you, uh, David. I, I have a couple quick questions. Uh, and uh, the, the first one is that I did tour the, the facility. I did see the uh, the shape of the building, both inside and outside. And, and I too uh, have a considerable amount of, of knowledge in restoration and uh, in museums uh, around the world uh, to projects uh, totaling almost $500 million in scope. Uh, I'm very familiar with, with buildings and restoration of, of projects like this. Having said that, uh, you have given us a cost estimate of roughly two and a half million dollars. Uh, I, I think that's low too, I, I, but I, I don't have an in-depth knowledge of, of that. I can give you my estimate of what the project is, but it, it wouldn't do, do any good right now to say that. Uh, but uh, I do have spoken to a number of folks around town, folks that have lived in this town many, many years, and I asked their opinion of this building. And they immediately go to the exchange building in town. And some of us know what that building was in town. I, uh, I, I only know of it by, by, by history of it. I didn't go in at all. Again, my wife went in it as a little girl. So, and when that building was torn down, there's still people today that talk about the loss of that, like it was their grandmother that passed away. So uh, uh, like we've all said, we believe in historical preservation of buildings. I do too. Uh, but we have a role as a finance committee here to, to look at projects before us, and, and some of them that are not even financially related, but this is definitely financially related. And it's our duty to try to, best we can, sort out the different costs associated with a project, both projects in front of us and projects that associate with this, with this cost going down the road. And what we can do is evaluate this project tonight that's been put before us, uh, the foundation definitely needs work. There's no question about that. And, uh, uh, and we'll discuss that later and vote on, on the project before us. Uh, but what I think we need to do, and to everyone's point here, and to Joe's point, what he's trying to do, is better bet these projects going forward. 
And at town meeting, it's up to the town citizens and voters at town meeting to make that decision. But it's our role to give the town at the town meeting the, the best information as we can. Uh, so maybe uh, David, you and I, and, Dave, uh, and Joe, and Griffin, and Sean, you know, maybe we can, you know, over the next 60 days, which is very short, very short, because we've got a lot of other things going on, but if maybe work on that that overall future number, if we can. If we can't, then we'll, we'll, we'll go with the 2.5 and uh, or other higher numbers that we think it's gonna cost. But we talked about phasing of projects in uh, earlier in the meeting. So uh, that's where uh, I stand now, but I, I do value historical buildings and a lot of people in this town does. That building has a lot, a lot of history. Uh, and uh, so with that, uh, thank you, Dave. If no one else has any questions, we'll uh, conclude the pleasure presentation and move on to uh, voting on the CPC articles, starting with uh, HP1. Is there any more questions? Thank you. Okay, thank you, David. And uh, uh, so going, uh, moving into the discussion and voting phases now, what I'd like to do is we'll start uh, hopefully folks have lists of the projects in front of, it, of you. Uh, if not, I can uh, recite them. Uh, it's start with H HP1. And uh, if someone could entertain um, a motion uh, for uh, taking a vote or entertain a motion of discussion and voting on HP1. Oh, open your mic. Dan, open your mic. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I make a motion that we accept and adopt uh, HP1. Why don't you uh, say the, the dollar amount too, Dave, just for... Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. I make a motion that we uh, accept HP1, accept and adopt HP1 in the amount of $112,200. Does anyone want to second this article? I'll second it. Okay. M motions are made. Article has been second. Uh, is there any discussion on uh, HP one? Yes. Brian. So I, I'm. I mean, I don't have necessarily a fundamental opposition to this project as proposed. My concern is that until we have an opinion from town council that we know that in fact this is something we can and if we choose to should move forward on, I would I would strongly urge the members of the finance committee to, to at least table this and let's visit it after the town council ha comes back with an opinion that we can then feel comfortable. Otherwise, I think we might look silly. Right, Brian, uh, we, you're right. I, I, I'll, I'll withdraw my motion. Well, let's 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 let's, uh, let's uh, uh, with one step forward. Uh, uh, another step. Uh, uh, anyone else have a discussion? That's Sorry. exactly what I was going to say. I just don't see how we can act on this when we don't know legally where we stand. Well, it, it strikes it strikes me. It strikes me that people seem to be in favor of this if it's legal. So why don't we change the? motion to add in effect that we're voting on it and it only passes if it turns out to be legal. Why don't we, we, just we don't have to do, we don't have to do it again. Pardon? I, I yeah, think so. uh, why not just wait on it? I mean there's no because then we have to do it all again. Because uh, I I concur I, uh, with Brian. I was going to hold my comments to last. I didn't want to say them up front, but uh, I think on this particular uh, article uh, that we should wait. I mean, next Tuesday uh, they're going to uh, they're going to meet town council and and Joe and decide on whether it's legal or not. And we can easily, if it's legal, I think we'll all be in favor of it. And there's also a question uh, if you read. Uh, uh, in, in, in the, the CPA uh, website, the state website, uh, it tells you whether or not uh, town funds can be used for church purposes. Uh, and it strictly says you cannot use money for church purposes. So uh, it's the, uh, I think waiting for legal opinion is the best way. So procedurally, how do we, with anyone, 
Do we just, uh, I can I just withdraw. Vote? I just withdrew my motion. Does that need to? So it's off the table. Okay. Do we vote on that? Does anyone know or? Well, I would like to Dan's withdrawn his motion. I would like to propose that the members of the committee table this to take it up at, at a time when town legal counsel has offered an opinion as to whether or not this is something we can do without violating state statutes. Second. I'll second it. All those, any discussion on, on the new motion? Hearing no discussion? All those in favor of, of tabling until we get a legal opinion, say aye. Mary? Aye. Aye. Dan? Aye. Angelo? Aye. 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 Brian? Aye. Aye. John is five. Five uh, that we table this motion awaiting uh, legal opinion. Now, moving on to HB2, uh, the restoration of fence, uh, no, excuse me, uh, Article 3, uh, Veterans Memorial Circle at Evergreen Cemetery. Uh, someone could make a motion on that. I vote, make a motion that we accept and adopt HP3 in the amount of $48,385. Any uh, second on that? I'll second it. Second. Okay. Uh, motions are made. It's been seconded. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of uh, HP3, Mem Veterans Memorial Circle at Evergreen Cemetery for the amount of $48,385. Uh, Mary, how do you say? Aye. And? Aye. Angelo? Aye. Uh, Brian? Aye. And John is aye. That's five zero. It passes. HP uh, four, Brooks Academy structural improvement. Uh, someone make a motion on this article. Does anyone want to make make a motion? No motion is being made. It uh, can fail for lack of a motion, John. Pardon? It can fail for lack of a motion. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh... Okay. Uh... Uh, John, I will make a motion that we accept and adopt HB4 in the amount of $1,150,000. Second. Second. No second. Uh, I guess uh, procedurally wise, I guess hearing no second, uh, that the motion fails. Okay. Uh, moving on to uh, and 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 just, uh, but just also if we uh, just because we uh, I guess failed is maybe not the correct term, but we didn't vote on this article. Uh, we can always bring it back for reconsideration at a future uh, meeting. And that's the same with any article that we, that we discussed tonight. Uh, next one is CH5, Lower Cape Community Housing Institute. Uh, I'll speak to this after we have a motion if we want to discuss it. I had, I've spoken to the Ann Robinson on this, so I can give you my opinion on this. Uh, make a, a second. Do I hear a motion for... I'll, I'll move that we uh, support CH5 in the amount of $7,500. Any second of this? I'll second it. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, motion for made. It's been seconded for the uh, Lower Cape Community Housing Institute for a sum of uh, $7,500. Uh, this was... Uh, this is uh, just looking at my notes here. Uh, this past, John, uh, I just thought of something. I maybe can't do that. I'm not on the board there, but I'm an advisor. Procedurally, I probably shouldn't vote on this one or make a motion. Nobody even thought. 
Uh, uh, thank you, Mary. You, you're probably 100% uh, correct on that. Uh, All right, so I'll move it, Don. I'll make the motion that the Finance Committee approve the Lower Cape Housing, the Lower Cape Community Housing Institute application uh, for $15,000 over two years, $7,500 per year, and that uh, we meet the first approved amount of $7,500. Uh, 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 Brian, uh, could you adjust your motion? The CPC only voted $7,500 for this. Right, so the approved amount is $7,500. Yeah, not oh. $15,000. Okay. You could restate your motion. Okay, so my motion is that the Finance Committee approve the Lower Cape Community Housing Institute uh, Community Development Partnership Project uh, for $7,500. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll okay. second it. Motion has been uh, made, second, and the second is for $7,500, Lower Cape Community Housing Institute. Uh, I did speak with, uh, I think she's a director or chief program officer, Ann Robinson. And what this organization does is they work with eight Mid-Cape towns, uh, providing them with educational seminars and information on, on, how, on housing, affordable housings and how towns can work together uh, to achieve their goals of affordable housing. That's what this uh, is, uh, is about. And like I say, it's been funded by $7,500 by uh by the cpc uh i'd like to entertain a vote uh on this so please signify uh if how you how you're voting uh uh dan hi uh angela hi Brian? hi Ma mary you can abstain i'm gonna abstain yeah okay and i'm voting for it that's four uh four Zero one on uh, Lower Cape Community Housing Institute. Next one is uh, this one also needs some discussion. Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion on this veteran's home. Uh, and and Dennis, uh, someone to make a motion for is it for fifteen thousand is what the CPC approved for this. So, so John, John oh, rather than correct. making a motion on this, I would like to propose that we we directly request that someone speak to the committee regarding this, this application. I think there's a significant amount of confusion and concern as to what these funds will be actually used for. I think it would be beneficial for someone to come before the Finance Committee and, and clarify so that we can comfortably vote on this. Uh, I, I, I feel comfortably, Brian, that I can, I can do that. Uh, I spoke with the, uh, with the director. Uh, it, and uh, about that, I, I'd be happy to, to have them come in and do it, but I, I feel very comfortable that I can adequately explain what this is about. And this article, too, uh, is also very similar to uh, the Greystone uh, project. Right. That uh, we can table this one, Brian, and, and bring it back at a later date, because there's, there's two questions in this one, too. It's, it's an out-of-town entity asking for money and the second one is it's a private uh, entity asking for that money. So why don't we just pre to do this one as, as, as like the gray stone? Well, we're, and legal is working on this one too. So we'll, we'll table we'll that. Table. But uh, but uh, in the in the future, if you'd like to have someone come in, I can Andrew Garcia happy to come in. Uh, but I can feel uh, very comfortable talking about this. Uh, okay, moving on. So we'll table this one to the next uh, next uh, time we talk about it. Uh, this one, CH7, is funding for a part-time housing coordinator. Uh, this is uh, for the Housing Affordable Trust in town. Uh, it's for the amount of $50,000, uh, 30000 of which goes to the part-time coordinator, and 20000 is for expenses for that coordinator. Uh, entertain a motion uh, for funding of a part-time coordinator. I move that we approve CH7 funding for the part-time housing coordinator in the amount of 50,000. We have a second. I'll second it. Second. Uh, any discussion? Okay. Uh, just a quick, I'll just quick, a quick overview too. I spoke to Don Howell on this. He's one of our selectmen in town. He's also chairman of this, uh, of this, uh, of the, uh, 
of the Housing Affordable Trust. And like I said, it's basically 30,000 for a person to coordinate the activities to try to find and help people attain affordable housing, helping uh, with other housing needs, and then $20,000 of, uh, of expenses associated with that. And uh, so with that, I'll just take, in, in, entertain a, a vote. Uh, Mary? Aye. Uh, Angelo? No. No? Okay, Dan? Aye. Brian? Aye. And I'll pass it aye. That's uh, four to one in, uh, on this one. Uh, next one is uh, OS8, Hinkley's Pond Watershed uh, Preservation Project. I entertain a motion uh, for this article. I'd like to move that article. I'd like to Any move second? $360,000 um, to fund the Hinkley's Pond Watershed Preservation Project. We get a second? Second. Second. Okay, so moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll take a vote. Uh, Mary? Aye. Uh, Angelo? Aye. Uh, Dan? Aye. I'm an, uh, Brian, excuse me. Aye. And I'm an I open all sides five zero. That passes. And, and this, this is a perfect good example of what Brian spoke to earlier about a, a partnership and, and town resources and private uh, donations coming in. Uh, next one is uh, the bike uh, R11 bikeways crossing lights at Depot Road. Uh, I can speak to this. Uh, that didn't entertain a motion yeah, for this. R9, John. R9. R9. R9, oh, John. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Brian. I'm sorry. I skipped over that. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, R9 Heritage Natural Heritage Trail Project. You entertain a motion. I'll move that we approve R9 Harwich Natural Heritage Trail Project Phase 1 in the amount of 150000 I'll second. Uh, okay, so moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, uh, Mary, how do you vote? Aye. Angelo? Aye. Uh, Brian? Aye. Dan? Aye. Aye, and I'm an aye, that's five, uh, zero. I'm making a note here, I'm gonna send the applicants an email after this, so I'm just making a note to myself. Uh, next one is the bike crossing lights. I entertain a motion uh, for the bike passing crossing lights. I'll make a motion that we uh, ad accept and adopt the bikeways crossing lights at Depot Street Road project in the amount of $15,000. Second. Second. Okay, it's been seconded by Angelo. Uh, any discussion? Uh, I, I, I spoke to the, uh, to the applicant on this one too, and uh, uh, what it is basically, we see them throughout town. There's half a dozen of these things that, that flash when people go up, uh, ride their bikes to warn traffic and stuff. This one is actually coming in a little bit less. Usually they're about $30,000. The reason for this yeah. one is, is because the line of sight to these particular lights is very far away. So, so cars can, uh, and, and bike can be seen quicker. And so it's, it's roughly half the cost. And for, for folks who are wondering where this crossing light may be, it's going to be located, you know, where Stone, uh, Stone Woods? Stone Woods. Stone Woods. Stone yeah. Stone Wood. And uh, it's, it's that bike path. So there's an oyster company there, Big Rock Oyster or something like that. And yeah. it's that, that's the depot. I know there's a lot of depot streets, depot roads in this town, but that's where this bike path uh, licensing is. Uh, sorely needed. Sorely needed, I agree. Sorely needed. There's no more discussion. Mary, how do you vote? Aye. Angelo? Aye. Uh, Brian? Aye. And uh, Dan? Aye. I'm an eye there too. Okay. Uh, that five zero. Next one is R12, Old Colony Rail Trail, Harwich Chatham Marker Pro. And I can speak to. I spoke to the petitioner on this. I can speak to this also. Uh, entertain a motion for this one. Move that we 
move we approve R12 Old Colony Rail Trail Harwich Chatham Town Border Market Project in the amount of $1,000. There is a second. I'll second. Motion second. been seconded. Uh, any discussion? Uh, just a quick uh, commentary on this. This is a, a basically a two granite posts uh, that will be put on the bike trail on the boundary of Chatham in uh, Harwich, uh, showing the, the boundary lines of, uh, of, of the two towns. These are very similar boundary marks throughout the bike rail trail on Cape Cod. And this is a joint uh, project with Chatham, a shared cost. Harwich's cost is a thousand, Chatham is a is thousand. These are granite posts, there's practically zero maintenance. Uh, I'd like to take a vote on this. Uh, all those in favor, Mary? Aye. Uh, Angelo? Aye. Uh, Dan? Aye. Uh, Brian? Aye. And, uh, and myself, that's 5 0. Okay, the next one uh, Brook Park Lighting, R13. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to entertain a motion for the Brooks Park Lighting. I move we approve R13, Lighting <laughs> Project Phase 5, Part 2, in the amount of $125,000. Second. 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 Motion been seconded. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion. Uh, Mary? Aye. Angelo? Aye. Dan? Aye. Brian? Aye. And I'm an I, that's five zero. Uh, next article is sand pond restoration. Uh, I can entertain a motion for sand pond restoration. Yeah, I'd I make like a motion. To... I'm sorry. Go ahead, Go ahead Brian. No, 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 no. I'd prefer you go. All right. <laughs> I make a motion that we approve the sand pond revitalization project phase two in the amount of $83,500. I'll second it. Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? I'd just I'm like to find I think I could get over there. Everybody in town learned how to swim, and I don't know how to swim, so I think I better go there. <laughs> Maybe you get a senior discount, Mary, huh? Maybe I do it, yes. <laughs> Angela, did you have a comment? Yes, I do. Uh, it, this strikes me uh, as a, a very interesting way of, of building a, a project. You put in this amount of money, and then you go and you do a little more and a little more, and then you hire people and you do all sorts of things. I think we should just hold it until somebody hands us a plan that says, here's what it will cost to do, and here's what it will cost to do on an annual basis. I think it's a good idea. I'd like to see it done. But I, it, this is voting for, for nothing. It's voting for all sorts of things. That's my call. I would, respectfully, I would respectfully suggest to you that it is in some in some sense, I get your point, Angela. It has a field of dreams feel to it. But the other side of it is that if you spent any time up at that property, and I have two grandchildren myself right now, and it, the only thing that property is lacking is some loving attention. I think if the town puts a little bit of energy into that property and ultimately brings lifeguards there, it's going to be exactly what people want because the beach is crowded. And as I, I agree with Dan, the, when it gets windy over there, little kids don't want any part of it. My grandkids don't want any part of it. So I, I mean, I do agree with your point and I know what you're saying, but it's a relatively small amount of money. I think that the payback on it will be immediate. Uh, yeah, Angelo, I, I think that part of the application process does provide for what you're asking. Now, whether the information is provided or not, that's up to the applicant, it's up to the CPC to, to, to monitor it. I, I think having the, the project completed is fine. I am saying the way it is being completed is probably not the right way to do it. It's, it, and that's just a finance thing. And if if it's done correctly, somebody should be able to hand you a piece of paper in a week and, and, and have it because they have the plan. 
as I said, Angelo, the I think the application process for CPC does ask if there are any additional funds that will be required down the road to complete this project. I think that's in there. I'm being a little bit more than complete the project. Complete the project and and run the project. Staffing. You're talking about staffing. That's right. No. Yeah. Oh. I get your point. I, 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 and I, I still think that with all, you know, with all consideration, it is, it makes good sense to invest in this particular property for a modest amount of money. I think the payback will be relatively immediate. Uh, any more discussion? Uh, okay. We'll take a vote on this. Uh, and, uh, Mary, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Brian. Aye. Uh, Angelo. I'm going to vote aye because I, I, I want to see it done, but I, I bet a quarter that in five years, if I'm still around, that, that it's going to be costing us money that we don't even know about. Okay. Well, I hope you're still around in five years, Angela. Yeah, no, you don't. That's okay. Me too. Yes, I do. <laughs> and uh, Dan? Aye. Aye. And I'm an aye too. Uh, just one uh, comment on Angelo's thing. I agree 100% with you, Angelo, and I know exactly what you're talking about. And I think Joe Powers does too. I don't want to speak for Joe, but I believe he wants to do better vetting of not his particular article, but all articles coming before him. And uh, thanks, Joe, for coming on. And uh, and I I share that. I share Brian. I I, I get a good sense from this committee that that's. I think I don't think we want to see these phase one projects followed by a phase two, followed by a phase three, and then phase three gets underestimated and it comes back next year as more money. So I'm going to give Joe uh, the ability to to do what he said he's going to do. So uh, I agree with that. There again, I'm going to say that the application process does provide for that. Mm -hmm. Maybe not the personal service aspect, but that could be built in. But yeah. Yeah, you know, you have to ask for the information. Yeah. And I know uh, CPC is changing their ways too a bit on their applications too. So, uh, Brian, I forgot to mention, I hope you're doing it. Uh, this year we have to uh, record not only the, the, the numerical number, but we have to record people's names too. Great. Thank you. I forgot. I'm, I, I had a big thing to tell you that. I forgot you made about it. You it clear to me the other day. I got it, brother. I know. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, San Pond, we just did. Uh, R15, uh, Senior Memorial Field Fencing Project. I'd like to entertain uh, a motion for that. I move we approve R15, Senior Memorial Field Fencing Project in the amount of 40181 Uh Do I get a second? I'll second it. Second, motioned and seconded. Do any discussion? Hearing no discussion. Mary, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Brian? Aye. Dan? Aye. Angelo? Aye. Uh, that concludes the oath of the only. Uh, oh. The, uh, the only two that we're going to bring back and it's waiting. Uh, John, uh, John, John, what was your vote on R15, please? This was I was an I also. I was an I also, right? Thank you. Uh, so the only two that we're going to bring back is uh, and just waiting a legal opinion on is 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 uh, uh, HP1 and uh, CH6, the Greystones and the Veterans Project. All the other ones uh, passed. No, HP4 failed for a lack of a second. Oh, right. so, well, H, you're right. Yes, HP4. Uh, so we'll we'll uh, definitely uh, revisit that. Uh, so I'll send out a note to the applicants uh, that came and spoke to us tonight, so they know uh, how their 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 article. Uh, uh, whether to whether to vote and stuff. So uh, I just want to make sure HP4 that black it, I guess failed for lack of a second. Is that correct? Yeah, failed for lack of a second. 
right now. Okay. And uh, John, yes, yeah. If we have a moment, uh, I was going to make a comment when we were talking about HP4, but it the comment is much broader than just that particular project. One of the things that occurred to me when I reviewed the application with Brooks is the fact that this this um, foundation has been been deteriorating over years and years and years and years. And I know in the not-for-profit sector, there's a, a management standard, if you will, for not-for-profits to have maintenance plans. Definitely. Uh, and I'm just wondering, that for topic of a future uh, agenda item or discussion that we should possibly talk about, uh, how we, how shall I say, get the message out that organizations need to have a maintenance plan so that they can project what their maintenance expenses are going to be over the course of time. Yeah, you know, the issue will be that that's a town owned building. And, and so it's, they're going to exempt themselves. And, and I hear you and I, I totally agree in, a, in, in the not-for-profit sector, they, they need to have a capital schedule. They need to be able to say what the usable life of every component of the building is and they need to be putting aside funds to replace them when the usable life expels, uh, uh, expires. But, yeah. but the town gets gets the ability to just slip the news constantly, and that's the problem. If this were being owned and operated by the not-for-profit, totally different. But it's the town's building. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I'm just thinking in terms, in general terms, whether whether there's something that we should be doing in terms of getting a message out that organizations should have a maintenance plan in place, even the town. I don't know if the town has a maintenance plan. You know, even broader though, I think the, the town really needs to take on the mindset that says that if you want money from taxpayers, especially for projects that are capital driven, you really need to have a strategy that's going to develop some measure of private funding that will partner because that's that shows relevance right away hct can immediately show their projects are relevant because they have people ready to step up and help fund and and brooks doesn't have to have the same amount of money but i do know i've lived in this house now for 14 years they've solicited me one time for a gift one time in 14 years well it's ironic that we have that the town has a capital plan but it doesn't have a maintenance plan yeah uh, joe are you still on the line joe But yes, I, I, I am, and I've heard, and I was letting you do your deliberations. Um, um, Are you having and, a beer? <laughs> I think we do have a. I think we do have a plan, though. Well, well, first of all, I appreciate um, the discussion thus far. I, I do, and this is what I'm trying to get to when I when I've been saying um, about that that project that will begin right after town meeting. Um, because these points that you're raising tonight are no different than what I heard uh, through Capital Outlay Committee, uh, and it makes sense. And I, I will say, in, in Sean Libby's defense, we do have a facilities maintenance manager, and we do have a facilities maintenance plan for our town buildings. Uh, and I do appreciate, Dan, where you're coming from, uh, and Brian, your follow-up on the not-for-profits. And what I'm struggling right now is, you know, by my count, we have at least four buildings that I'm aware that the Board of Selectmen has license agreements with, and they're, they're all different. Uh, you know, this particular building, the license agreement, uh, and if I remember correctly, was renewed in uh, 2019, I think for 10 years, puts all of the maintenance on the town, um, especially the apron of the building and, and all of that. So the big ticket items fall to us. And, and so um, I don't disagree with your, your mindsets. Um, I think in the short term, I would argue that we might have to renegotiate or, or perhaps reestablish our license agreements because in other areas of the town, you're absolutely right, Dan, there are maintenance uh, plans that are required of the tenants and we have them on file. And, and so, you know, I think there has to be a, a, a more um, enterprise-wide look at our license agreements uh, for these buildings.
but there is a facilities maintenance plan and I think Sean would tell you and I, I wouldn't argue with him um, we have a lot of buildings on there that I don't think people at the time really thought of as uh, facilities maintenance buildings mm -hmm. and so that's one of the things that I really need to get ahead of now because uh, we haven't talked about it tonight and I don't want to introduce this topic uh, before town meeting but uh, our cultural center um, you know there's uh, the West um, West Howard schoolhouse building and all of that and of course the uh, you know the surplus buildings we have so the points well taken and for me you know I read the agreements when the issues come up this particular agreement for Brooks Academy puts it squarely on the town and so you know that that needs to be addressed uh, Joe, I don't know if uh, the uh, uh, waterways or the golf uh, departments have been keeping track of maintenance because a couple of years ago, at least, at least I looked at their uh, budgets. They have been they had been doing uh, just that, okay, uh, doing their budgets and laying out the future uh, maintenance projects. So I, th I think they had a very good way of doing it too. I do know that uh, golf has indicated that they're revisiting uh, their, their capital projects and their capital plan. Yeah. Um, and that was one of the groups that really got me thinking about that effort starting in June is to well, get right back into that. Yeah, yeah, thank you though, Angel. Joe, would they have the ability at, at Brooks to sue for specific performance if we don't move forward? Because you're saying that it's incumbent upon us that the lease falls completely on the town. So could they sue for specific performance? But if not, they want a legal opinion on that. Yeah, um, I, I didn't see that language in the agreement. I can go back over it to see if I've missed that, but I don't see that in the language. Um, I, and I do know that because that agreement uh, was re-executed right after I started here. And I know it had been uh, languishing for about a year or so. Um, I know license agreements that we have that are, if I can use the phrase, more modern, um, I, I think really reflect what we would want a license agreement to be. Um, I, I get the sense that this was more of a carryover from years past. Uh, okay. But I, I, can, I can examine that again and get okay. back to you, Brian. All right. Thank you. Okay. John, have a motion to adjourn. Well, I got uh, just a couple more, a couple things under old business uh, first, Brian. Uh, just old business, uh, just a, a reminder to folks. Uh, Friday, Saturday, we have department head meetings, uh, 9 a.m. Uh, it's the packets. Uh, I mean, the dial-in information is on our website. It's on the selectmen's website. Uh, Monday night at selectmen's meeting, uh, we also have department heads meetings. Uh, and then on uh, Tuesday, we have a public hearing on the budget. And uh, Joe, did you get my note on, are you, are you gonna be able to attend? And I will the be budget? there, I will, have a, I will have a better backdrop and I will have my suit on. <laughs> I, I will be there. Oh, I will see be there. Your head, you know, so. <laughs> well, thank you. And, and, and I see Carol on there, she doesn't have to answer, but she's more than welcome, of course, you know that, so. Thank you. Uh, that's the budget meeting. And then on May 18th, folks uh we're going to hit these budgets hard we've got to we've got to get going uh on these budgets uh the warren articles you all have a copy of the warren articles now i had them published you have them now uh please read up on them uh so we can vote on them i looked at i looked at them we have approximately i think about uh 30 uh just bear with me one second i think we have we have about 36 warrant articles that, uh, that we can vote. I mean, there's either uh, no monies involved or monies that we do know, so we can vote on those. There's about 15 articles that need more uh, information uh, with budget numbers. Uh, the Montemoy school system is voting their budget tonight. I haven't heard, I don't know if someone's gonna let you know, Joe, how they, how they voted on that, you know, or? Uh, Dr. Carpenter and I spoke yesterday. He's going to notify uh, Carol and I tomorrow, and of course, I'll update everybody uh, during the budget hearings. And, and there is a topic on the agenda for Monday night for the board. As we all know a town meeting, there seems to be one article, at least, that uh, draws uh, the attention of folks. And I think the school budget is definitely going to be that one this year for 
for lots of reasons I'm not going to get into now. So, so I appreciate that, folks. If you can read up on the budgets, uh, I hope I don't think I'm bugging you with all the stuff I send, but uh, I, I want to get the information out so we all come prepared to these meetings uh, to discuss and vote uh, quickly. Uh, so thank you. And Brian, if you're still there, if you want to entertain the motion to adjourn, or anybody. <laughs> I'll make a motion to adjourn. Oh, I'll second. second. Uh, all those in agreement, uh, Mary? Aye. Angelo? Aye. Uh, Dan? Aye. Brian? Brian? Brian went home. <laughs> Brian went uh, Okay, uh, we got a quorum anyway. Uh, I say aye. Uh, okay, thank you all, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It was a very productive uh, evening, uh, I think. Not only did we get through a lot of articles, uh, but I think Joe heard a good consensus of the board of where we would like to get more information on. Uh, Michael, you just came on board, and Tom, uh, we, 